Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Jason Thompson and I'm the business director here at Explosive Edge Athletics in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. This is my business partner, Sean Mishka, the athletic performance director here. For those of you who don't know, Sean is a, uh, has an extensive background in athletic performance training and is a very really highly sought after and highly recognized expert and speaker in the field of power development and jump training. We're going to try to keep this informal today and go over some of the things that Sean and I are very passionate about with regards to athletic performance training. With that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him kind of discuss some of those things that we are so passionate about. Thanks, Jason. Uh, like Jason said, one thing that we do find uh, that other competitors uh, of ours don't do is, is that test their athletes and try to bridge the gap between science uh, and the actual application of what they do in their training programs. We have a few tools that we utilize in order to make that happen in more of a reality on a day-to-day -day basis every time an athlete walks through that door. Uh, one of the items is a Tendo unit. Uh, the second item is this jump mat that you'll be able to see in a little bit. And the third item is something that we just got started with, and that's a myotest system. So we're going to try to show you an example uh, of some of those things and try to see where that carryover is in the athletic performance. The reason why we need those pieces of testing equipment is because I feel very strongly that sports science is suffering here in the United States. And the reason is, is because we've taken the science and we've taken it out because of the lack of trying to get athletes to progress before they're probably ready. Uh, and if we don't have a way to measure that and a way to test that, uh, we're basically, our training programs are basically worth a handful of spit to us. That being said, uh, we're going to do a demonstration here with the Tendo unit and try to show you uh, the types of speeds that are necessary for specific sport development. Uh, we know uh, that there's a power continuum where there's different types of strength uh, along that continuum and different ways uh, to train that based on speed uh, and based on application out on the field and on the court. And that's how we design sport specific programs. With that said, I'm going to do just a short demonstration here on the box squat. Uh, and we'll probably have a video in the future describing that box squat, but you're going to see me do a number of reps. Uh, the first rep uh, will be done at the speed. Uh, hopefully I can duplicate the typical speeds that are done in a weight room. Uh, and the second two will be done a little bit more explosively, and Jason will be taking you through the, the tender unit as it's going through. So hopefully my lack of warm-up won't, uh, won't impact this too much. As Sean's getting set up, you'll see how the tender unit itself is uh, connected directly to the bar, um, to the nylon cable, and sits right on the floor. Very easy to use, very easy to set up, and does provide us with immediate feedback. As Sean said in his first rep, he's doing it in an attempt to replicate what's typically seen um, in the way of your settings. He's now doing a couple reps that are done very explosively. And as you can see, the tendon unit, as Sean is doing these, and now once he completes it, the tendon unit has registered all four repetitions. So when we say that it provides immediate feedback, every single rep is recorded, displayed immediately, which is very useful for both the athletes that are training, and more importantly for those that are doing the instructor training, that would be us. I'll let Sean kind of discuss these numbers and uh, show you guys exactly what's going on here with the Tendo. I, I talked about that power continuum, uh, something that we utilize with every one of our athletes depending on their sport. Uh, we know that different percentages of sport are played along different uh, ends of that spectrum on that power continuum, whether it be absolute or limit strength, uh, strength speed, which is the ability to uh, move a, an apparatus or something uh, heavier implement at a greater speed. Uh, speed itself, pure speed itself, power, uh, and then speed strength or the ability to apply force rapidly at high, at high velocity. So we know different sports require different percentages of each one of those types of strength. That being said, we have different days and different ways to be able to manipulate those variables uh, to take care of those needs. As you can see on my different reps here, uh, Jason mentioned some of the things that were happening there. The first rep I actually attempted to do at speeds that are usually replicated in traditional strength training methodologies. Uh, typical strength training methodologies will call for velocities of being 0.4 to 0.5 meters per second, uh, numbers that are well documented uh, in European research. Uh, as you can see, I actually hit a 0.44 here uh, with that first rep, so uh, I was able to replicate that type of speed. That's a speed that you'll very, very rarely see done uh, within uh, the confines of these walls. Uh, simply because most sports aren't going to require high levels of absolute or limit strength. The, the number two through four reps, uh, I tried to do at speeds that were going to uh, be more uh, 
located out on the field, out on the court of play, uh, out on the track. And those speeds are anywhere from 0.8 to 0.9, uh, maybe even a little higher than that, meters per second. Uh, those are going to be more towards speed strength uh, demands. And those speed strength demands uh, are something that we want to train uh, each and every time. You can see number three and number four were actually exactly the same at 0.94 meters per second. And that second might be 0.88. Uh, you probably also noticed that not only did I go up fast at number two through four, but I also lowered the bar extremely fast, uh, trying to emphasize that eccentric motion. The faster we go down, the faster we're going to go up. And you can see the difference there between rep one uh, and then two, three, and four. And as you can see, you know, again, we're discussing some of the equipment you know, we use to test and monitor our athletes. Um, you know, one of the great reasons this is so crucial is because this middle number right here tells us pretty much training efficiency. Uh, we always want to keep our athletes training at at least 90% of what they're capable of. So this does allow us to show, based on their best rep, which were Sean's two last reps, which were his 100% reps, where his other reps range with regards to that. So you'll notice the first rep was 46% of his best rep. We want that number to always be above 90%. Not other nice part about the tango is it does display power output. We know that for certain exercises, there's a minimum amount of power that should be generated by the athlete in order to have, in order to, have to carry over to the sport. So that's why we feel the 10 unit is a great device that provides that immediate feedback so we can use it to constantly adjust and change protocol in our training programs for our athletes. Are we well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this is one great tool that we use with all of our athletes uh, in any given movement that we may do. 